Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we would like to take a look on how to do the 3D model in Rhino for this cross pendant. Are you ready? Let's get started. We are going to start it at the top view and we are going to draw the cross outline first. The first one I'm going to do about 22 millimeter and for about four millimeter high and the straight one I'm going to do about four millimeter wide and 31 millimeter tall for example like this and you can do whatever proportion that you like um, I'm just rendering to come up this number then I'm going to use an align tool to align to the center and kind of moving this up to whatever that's the right proportion all right, so now that I have this, I'm going to make them into three dimension. I'm going to draw a straight line from the midpoint up and roughly about 1.5 millimeter. And that will be our reference line. I'm gonna snap in here, here, and here. So you see that little bit triangle over here. After I do that, I wanna also wanna making a copy. Uh, simply just copy this one to here. Uh, so then we will have the same profile and I need to rotate this one back to this point. All right, so now we have, on our perspective, we see something like this. I'm going to use the surface command and we are going to extrude this curve straight. Both are equal no, and going from this point to this point. So then we get that. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we kind of get things like this. After that, I simply gonna pick up everybody and we are going to use the trim tool and we want to trim somewhere in the middle. And a lot of time it may be hard for you to see which one is which is because it's harder to know where's the contour line. And sometimes what you can do is you can explode them and join it back. So now you can see the line in the middle so it's easier for you to trim. So we're gonna pick up both of them and we're gonna hit the trim command and we will like to trim the line here and also the line here and we're gonna trim over here and flip it over, trim it over here. So now we have it perfectly meet there. Don't forget to join them back together. I would like to cut out a 45 degree surface right at the end. So I'm going to use the rectangle and we're gonna creating a surface first. So something a little bit taller like this and simply just have this one to rotate it 45 degrees. So let's go from here to here and type it minus 45 in this direction. Okay, so then we have that, we can simply just mirror to the other side. Then we have both of them and this two end. Um, simply what we're gonna do is pick up all the surface and we wanna trim the one we don't need it. So we don't need this one and this one. Also this tiny triangle here and here. And don't forget to join them. We are going to do the same on the other side. Let's go ahead to use the rectangle with the three point one, two, and the third one is going up. And we simply also going to have this one to rotate 45 degree here. And again, we wanted to mirror to the other side. So once we have that, again, we're gonna pick up all three of them and let's go ahead to trim the extra there, there and join them. Let me temporarily to hide this one and that's dealing with this curve here. We are going to trim each other. Again, uh, get rid of the one in the middle and make sure you join them together. And turning back what we were hiding. So now with this curve, we can extrude it straight down and make sure solid equal no because we need to uh, connect it to the top piece and I want to extrude it down maybe just a little bit over one millimeter. Let's go ahead to join them and use the command cap. So now it is solid. Let's double make sure it is closed solid poly surface on our property. 
Okay, to make them not as sharp looking, as you can see the render, this is like way too sharp. I want to give it a uh, chamfer edges, and let's chamfer the edges for something really small, like 0.2 millimeter, and see how does it go. All right, so when you have a chamfer, and when all the point coming into uh, that point, we usually will have this opening right there. And this is kind of pretty easy fix here. So what we can do is we can use the surface from planar curve and we can simply pick up all this curve then that will be a surface there again we are going to use a surface from planar curve i'm gonna pick up that all right and if surface from planar curve it doesn't work mean it is actually not flat so another uh, command we can use is surface from two three four uh, edges then we will get that surface and we're gonna do that for all the corner which has an opening there All right, so once you do that, make sure that they all, uh, it is a closed solid polished surface. And let's take a look on the ghost view, and this will be the cross. All right, so now we need to define a space that we are going to do the B setting. I simply wanted to do is to duplicate the edges of this one, this one, this one, and this one. And once you do that, make sure you join them together. Then we wanted to offset a wall thickness there. Now, because it's not flat, we will not only want to use the offset, we want to offset the curve on the surface. And it will ask you like, what is the distance? I'm going to set it up here for 0.6 millimeter. And we are going to do a test here. I am going to simply using the solid command and you have an uh, extruded planar curve straight and I want to cut it down uh, I want to make sure both sides equal yes and I want them to go in down about 0.8 millimeter so then um, I'm going to giving a test by doing a bowling difference this one out of this and then you will have that opening there okay so I'm going to go back one step since this is symmetrical so I'm going to mirror to the other side and having that to mirror to the top all right and we are going to do the bowling on this one first so that let's go ahead to do the bowling difference and this one out of those four color here all right so then we have that opening the next one it's going to be the same way that's duplicate the edges of this guy this guy this one and also the one at the end let me do this side as well since we are going to use the same command and make sure you join them all right and then we're gonna pick up this curve let's do the same we want to offset on the surface and this is the base surface uh, make sure you flip it inside and we wanted to do 0.6 as well the same thing over here <laughs> And then we can pick up this one and this one. Let's go ahead to extrude the curve straight and we wanted the same 0.8 millimeter on both sides. Then we can pick up this extrusion and this extrusion and we can mirror to the other side. So now we, all we need to do is bowling difference. This one out of this guy, this guy and two on the top. All right, so we have that opening there. All right, so uh, for the stone setting, I actually want them to be chamfered a little bit. It will look much nicer. It's more like a bright cut there. So I'm gonna use in the chamfer and we're gonna do a test first. Let's try this one and see how that look for 0.4 millimeter there. All right, so that looks nice. And if that look nice, we're going to apply to all the surface there, all the edges there. All right, let's take a look on the render view and see how they go. Okay, so 
this is a uh, pretty good so far and double check this is still a poly uh, closed solid poly surface all right so now everything will find that's uh, dealing with a stone. If you like to know how to build a stone, I have I will put a link on the uh, right top corner here for you. Or if you want to uh, practice, so want to download this one, you can download the stone file uh, with the link at the description below. That will ask you to sign up my newsletter, and it will give you a link to download this uh, file. Now we have a stone here, and I want to size the stone into the size that I want. And I basically want to have about 1.2 millimeters. So I'm going to uh, scale 3D and make sure um, my vertex, it is check on my um, all snap. So I'm going to snap in to here to here and just type it 1.2. And then that will be my stone. Let's take a look on here and see if the size is going to fit. All right, so it looked like it was fitting into the space really well. Now I'm going to move my stone out and do my stone setting on the side. First, I'm going to draw a straight line. This is the line I'm going to pipe. And then we are going to, using the pipe command, to give a diameter about this compared to the stone. And depends on how you like your stone uh, to be set, either it's the shear prong, uh, or is the individual prong and if you do want to have a shear prong you might need to get them a little bit bigger okay you don't need to have it like the too tall it just so as long as they are a little bit taller than the table then you should be fine so i'm going to move it up something like this and make this one shorter and this is will be my shear prong i'm going to move in just a little bit like this all right and that's giving a test. Uh, let's mirror this one to the other side and also mirror our stone to the other side and see how that look. Um, the stone shouldn't touch each other and you want to have a gap about uh, 0.1 millimeter to 0.2 millimeter. So this one is a little bit way too close. So I might need to uh, move this stone out a little bit like this. And then at the same time, these two need to be moving a little bit like this. And if you need to adjust in, you might just want to adjust one of them. Moving in a little bit or maybe a little bit bigger. And then we can mirror again. Try to use the mirror instead of just moving around. So I'm going to using this as a set. We are going to use the linear array and we want to array go from here to maybe 20 of them and to somewhere about here to be equal size all right so this will be our reference i'm going to delete the first one the very last one i'm going to making a copy just in case i mess up you know that first one and then uh, i don't need to have a lot of them for that short horizontal arrangement let's group this one first and simply just move it back here and we want to tilt it in the angle that follow with the triangle that we have on that surface. And then we can move in and then we can move it into the right place somewhere over here. It looks like we have more than what we need. So I'm going to ungroup this one and let's go ahead to delete some extra here. Sometimes people will fill in the space with another uh, prong if that work for you you can go ahead to do that since we got one and this is a symmetrical it's quite easy we simply just going to mirror to the other side and again mirror one more time to the top all right so then we'll have that fill now let's go ahead to work on the other side is i'm gonna moving this and move it about at this place and now I'm looking at my front view. I want to tilt it again, really close to the angle that I have. And again, I have more than what I need. So I'm just going to ungroup it and delete the extra. And we want to mirror to the other side. Again, click on both of them and mirror to the top. 
Now the one on the top, we just need to ungroup bunch of them and we wanted to delete bunch of them as well this stone it's kind of inside of that shape and we can kind of moving up a little bit if you feel like it's too jammed close to the center all right after that just put the bell on it then you will have this cross pendant with the b setting i hope you enjoy the video there are a lot more trick and tip that i have on my membership program so if you're interested please check out the membership program for a lot more jewelry cat tutorial video thank you for watching i'll see you next